Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video which is going to be my top three in every makeup category. If you want to know what my top three foundations, concealers, blushes, bronzers, eyeshadow palettes, eyeshadow singles, lip liners, lipsticks, liquid lipsticks, highlighters, skin tints, mascaras, brow product. I've got it all laid out here in front of me on this table. If you could see the mess. <laughs> I'm having heart palpitations about the cleanup afterwards, but this is for you one of my most requested videos. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so quick disclaimer slash explanation of just how I went about this because this was tough, okay? I dread and hate doing these videos because it's just, one, it makes such a mess. I have to get so much products out of my drawers and they're just everywhere and it's, horrendous. Two, it's so hard to pick a top three and everything. It's so hard. There are certain categories where I feel like, yeah, that's that's easy. I know what that is. And then others, I've been trying to make this video for weeks, okay? I've had a whole list in my notepad. I've been crossing things out, replacing things, changing my mind, going back and forth. It's taken weeks to get like to a place where I'm happy to share my top three. I just feel like this video is so much more helpful and useful to a lot of you than doing like my holy grails, my number one product, because if that number one product just doesn't work for you, or it's not your preference, or it's just not working for you the way it does for me, typically, especially when we're talking about base products, then then what, you know? So I feel like doing a top three, it means if you've tried one of these or you can't get hold of one of these, one of these didn't work for you, you've got two other options, you know, to consider. So I feel like top three is a lot more helpful. I have included my absolute top three top three products regardless of availability because obviously you might already have these in your drawers so whether or not they were limited edition whether or not they've been discontinued I've included them because I just want this to be the most accurate representation of my top three instead of making disclaimers so these are my top three some of these products were limited edition they may come back so don't panic you may already have them in your drawers, but I have included some products that are gone forever. But where that is the case, I will try to give you an alternative that is, you know, close but not quite top three material. So let's jump into it. We've got a lot to cover. Grab a drink, grab a snack, grab your blanket, you know, get cozy, get comfy. This is going to be a long one. So I'm going to go in kind of makeup-ish order as, as long as I remember to do that. We're starting off with brow products. There really are only three that I ever use. So this was one of the easiest categories for me. The Huda Beauty Brow Pencil. You guys know this is the only one I use. I've probably used 10 of these at this point, maybe even more. I dread to add it up. I don't want to. I'm not going to. I won't. The reason I love this one so so much is it is smaller than any other that I've ever tried. I preferred the KVD Beauty one for a while because it had that flat pencil that I like but as soon as this one came along it was just the pencil itself is so tiny, the colour is nice and it just has the perfect amount of like wax versus slip. It's not too creamy that it smudges, but it's not too sort of firm that it breaks or it's hard to get payoff. It's just the perfect formula. The Pink Honey Brow Glue, if I am in between lamination appointments, but I still want that laminated, l -l 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 laminated look, this is what I go for. It keeps them in place all day. I can put them wherever I like. I could put them on my cheeks if I wanted to, but they will stay there all day. It is that laminated effect. So if that's not for you, then, you know, I understand each to their own, but a lot of the time it is for me and that's what I use. And then the Benefit Brow Gel. I didn't love this when I first started using this. I only fell in love with it or started to really like using it once I started getting my brows laminated because before I started getting my brows laminated, it just didn't control my brows it didn't hold them for me but now my brows I mean it's been like 10 weeks since I had them laminated they're not currently laminated but they are just slightly more malleable than they used to be slightly less of a battle 
is to be had when I'm trying to keep my brows in place and now this does it perfectly. When I want a slightly more natural brow, not a completely laminated look, I go for the Benefit Gel. Okay, so next we're going into eyeshadow palettes because I've just decided to do all of the eye and brow products first. So the first one of these palettes will be absolutely no surprise to anybody. It's Pat McGrath's Moonlit Seduction. It's my absolute holy grail all time favorite. If I had to pick a number one, it would be this one. It's just my favorite. It's absolutely stunning. I can wear this every day. I can do really simple, lower key looks with this, or I can go fully all out eyeshadows of dreams. It's all of my favorite colors. It's just like someone made an eyeshadow palette for me. And that someone was Pat McGrath. <laughs> what else could you want, you know? This next palette may be surprising because it has grown on me like I loved it from the first use but I would never have put it in my top three when it first came out but now it's like it's solidly in here it's Lisa Eldridge's Sorcery here's the thing what happened with this palette initially I loved it but it like I said it was not going to be like even a top five eyeshadow palette for me but now it's one of my absolute go-to all-time favorites and the reason is I've just really learned how to use it for myself and I think what does it for me is it's really these two shades or specifically this shade here I would just wear this every single day of my life it's so pretty and this whole palette is so special and so unique i have nothing else like it whenever i wear this you guys are like oh my god what is on your eyes you're all of you who didn't pick this up when it first came out are like devastated because you realize your mistake but it is coming back i'm told it's coming back this year sometime later this year i don't think it's going to be immediately soon but maybe in the autumn but yeah, it's stunning. I absolutely love it. It's so eye-catching. It's so actually versatile. You know, sometimes I'll just use one of these two shades and it's really not a very dramatic look. Other times I use the whole palette and it will be, you know, a mermaid's party on my eyes. I just think there's something very special and unique about it. And it took me a little while just to realize how special it was. But now it's like, ugh its place in my top three is solidified. Now this third one is gonna be shocked. I think you're gonna be shocked and awed, okay? I think you're going to fall off your seat because you're not going to be expecting this, but it's Pat McGrath's Velvet Liaison. This is the eyeshadow I have on my eyes today. I know what you're thinking, what? It's so boring, I don't understand it. And maybe a few weeks ago, Bieber would have been in here instead of this one. I'm boring, I am. I'm boring and basic, especially when it comes to eyeshadow. And previously Bieber was like my number one, one of my holy grail eyeshadow palettes ever. Very similar vibe. The Pat McGrath is just, it's smaller, it's easier to, con like it's more condensed. I think really out of Bieber, I used four or five shades, whereas this I love and use the whole palette. It's easier to travel with if I want to do that. And this lid shade, is the shade I have on my lids today, is so much better for me than the lid shade that's in Bieber, which is just a bit too dark for my skin tone. The shades and the undertones in here are just so perfect that I just find it so subtly, naturally stunning. It's so pretty and beautiful and it just works my skin tone so well. I understand it's basic and boring, but I honestly love it. And if I'm going for like a natural everyday look like I did today, that is the palette I'm pulling out now. Bieber who? <laughs> Not really, I still love her, but, but still. I'd, I'd pick that one. Mm. Now for mascaras, you guys are gonna absolutely know what two of these are. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk and the MAC Stack Mascara. These have been like solidly my favorite mascaras for months slash years, this one. I've been through multiple of both of them. I love them both. They're very different mascaras. MAC Stack gives me full fat, ginagorous, tentacular, venomous, variety tentacular lashes okay big fat full amazing lashes of dreams false looking lashes the charlotte tilbury still gives me drama and full impact lashes but in a more separated 
defined way than the MAC stack. When I want to see more of my eyeshadow, I go for this one, it lasts eternally. I can go for months with one tube and it gives me the best of the best performance from the first to the last use. I love everything about it. The brush, everything is just perfect. It gives me fanned out, perfectly defined, nicely voluminous and lengthened and lifted lashes of dreams. The third place of the mascara may surprise you because it's kind of one that has come back into my life recently and I've been obsessed with it, it's the mascara I have on today. It's Benefits Roller Lash. Who would have thought that would be the case, okay? I loved this mascara when it first came out, but then many, many mascaras came and went and I forgot about it and I picked it back up. I bought a new one uh, a month or so ago, because it was going viral on TikTok and I was like, hang on, I did love that. I wanna give it another try. And I just think since I've been using my lash serum and now my lashes are like insanely amazing, thanks to my Glow For It Lash Serum. This just looks so much better on me than it used to, even though I did always like it. Now I just don't really need length necessarily. I want to coat my lashes, I want no clumps, and I want lift and I want fanned out definition in a really black color. And I think this just really enhances my lashes so beautifully, but in a very fluttery way. It's not as volumizing as the Charlotte Tilbury and the Mac Stack, it's a lot more natural, but in the most beautifully fluttery, delicate, feminine way, it's come straight back into like my repurchased top drawer one of my absolute favorites, probably my favorite for like every day because it's just a little more natural than the other two. And now for the single eyeshadow categories. By the way, I'm not going to swatch absolutely everything because I don't want this video to be like three hours long, but I'll swatch as many products as I feel. Obviously nothing here is like new. So we don't need to go into an in-depth review of everything or we will be here until like three weeks on Thursday. But now we're moving on to single eyeshadows. First up, Beige Mitsa. Probably like the most every day of my three. Oh, I mean, every day of the week, you're not really sure what to do. You're in a rush. You want a one and done single eyeshadow. Beige Mitsa from Dior is just going to do it every time. You just need to whack this all over your lid and a little under your lower lash line and you're gonna look stunning. It's the perfect finish, the perfect amount of pigmentation, the perfect kind of understated but slightly special shade. It's just delightful. Another one I find myself using so often is my Charlotte Tilbury Diamond Eyes and this one is just the perfect like lid shimmer. If I just want a shimmery lid then this is the one that I grab for. If I want you know a bit of bronzer in the crease and a shimmery sparkly pretty reflective divine glorious moment on my eyeshadow that is the one I go for. And third place we do have a limited edition. This is the Pat McGrath Smuggler's Spice. This is from her Star Wars collection. It has that, you know, Star Wars-y lid. This was limited edition. I think it's gone now. It's such a shame because it's so flipping pretty. It's so pretty. Spring and summer one and done shadow. <gasps> it's just perfect. It's so beautiful and reflective. If these come back, Oh, that sold out really quickly and with good reason. It's just a special kind of unique, but very pretty shade. And yeah, I'm a big fan. Probably one of the most boring categories that we're gonna cover today, it's eye pencils or eye liners, okay? <laughs> Not that exciting, but sometimes necessary. So two of my absolute favorites are from Charlotte Tilbury. This is my all time absolute fave, waterline brightening color. This is their eye coal in eye cheat and it is cheating, okay? It wakes me up. It takes 10 years off me and adds 10 hours of sleep to what my eyes look like opens them why but it's not white it's like this really subtle natural creamy beige color this doesn't look like i've put white eyeliner on it just looks like my eyes are super bright and alive and awake and next we have the pillow talk liner it's just the perfect burgundy shade any kind of 
burgundy or pink or maroon or even like a more neutral eyeshadow look with this liner just suddenly becomes super special. Both of these have the nicest creamy gliding across the eye formula that just makes liner a breeze. The Pillow Talk especially, I love using this for a winged liner, you know, with a more subtle, maybe I've used the Pillow Talk palette or the Pillow Talk Dreams palette and I want a wing that's going to really go with that look. It's just the perfect shade. It's deep and rich enough to give you drama, but soft enough because it's not black that it stays sort of pretty and just a bit less harsh. It's such a gorgeous shade. And then for my liquid liner, I went with the Benefit Their Real Extreme Precision Liner in brown. I really like the formula of this, but it's just the special thing about it is the brown shade because it's rich and warm, but it's dark enough that it again it's giving you the definition especially against a more dramatic liner look but it's just that little bit softer and I really love this for doing cat eye liner in a corner liner it's really precise really diddy but it's kind of firm enough to help you if like me you're extremely useless at this sort of thing I find that one very easy to use I don't find it to run or smudge throughout the day and it's actually overtaken the KVD liner which is one of those products that I thought would never get pushed off top spot but it's happened it has done Okay, we're moving on to the facial area now and we're kicking off with primers. No surprises, the Tom Ford Soft Matte is my favourite, my holy grail primer. It's just my everyday primer. I don't really do my makeup without it. It's an unusual day if I choose another primer. It's just the perfect canvas for makeup. It's smooth, soft and blurring and refining on the skin and it slightly mattifies without taking glow and luminosity away. It just kind of smooths and refines everything in the most beautiful way. Every foundation I've got loves it. It goes on stunningly. It gives me an extra smooth finish to my foundation. It's gorgeous. I love everything about it. I need a small amount. Nothing's ever had an issue or fallen out with it. It's the perfect, like, everyday go-to primer. The Tatcha Silk Canvas, the original solid version, was my favourite for a very, very long time. It got gazumped by the Tom Ford Soft Matte. This just is a little smoother on the skin. But in the summer especially, or if I'm just wanting a little fresher of a finish to my skin or to my foundation, this is still an amazing primer. And I still am getting used to kind of using it a bit more because I got so obsessed with my Tom Ford, but this is still an excellent primer. It's just a little less smooth and refined and a little more fresh, juicy skin. And then the third one is the Forever Dior Glow Veil Primer. This is very much a glowy primer. If I have a foundation that is a little too matte for me, but I love everything else about it, so one would be the new Galon foundation, another would be the Hourglass. I tend to use this one because just look at that. Look at that glow. It's also stunning on the skin. It's really beautiful. You could put this down your legs, on your bod, and you're just going to look stunning. It's not shimmery or like a highlighter. It's just gorgeous. I just had a facial skin and it just gives those foundations that are a little more matte than I would love them to be enough juice to be loose about the hoose you know? I don't think you do, but we're moving on. Foundations. I'd love to know if you're surprised by the three that I've included. I'm not sure if you are or not. I could have included, this is one where I kept changing my mind. There's like five, five foundations and any five of those could have gone in this top three because I'm obsessed with them all. I love them all, but here's the three that I went for today. So of course, the Tom Ford shade Illuminate. This is my holy grail. I'm alarmingly, I left these out standing up because I wanted to see how much of them I've used. And this one is down to here. It's more than halfway gone. And this is my second bottle of this shade. Okay. I've used up like two bottles of this already. It's my go-to. I absolutely love it. If I had a choice how I wanted my skin to look without makeup, this is exactly what I would choose. The finish is just special. It's a medium coverage, very skin-like, but in the most stunning, glowy, 
skin-like way. It's just special. I love everything about it. I love the packaging. The shades are perfect for me and it's my holy grail and it has been for years. So to me, it justifies the price point in my mind if I can get 20% off. The other two, it could have been the House Labs. It could have been the Hourglass, but it isn't. It's the Chanel number no. one and the NARS, what is this one called? I can never remember, Light Reflecting. The NARS Light Reflecting and the Chanel number no. one. These two are kind of similar, but different. The Chanel, this is the foundation I have on today. Smooth, flawless, gorgeous skin. I do have to use a lot of it because in order to get like a medium coverage, even out redness and skin tone, I have to use quite a bit. This is down like to literally, I feel like the last drops, it's somewhere like, I mean, I can see bottle through here, but the line appears to be like down here. I've nearly used this up. I love it. It's so beautiful, fresh, healthy, youthful, doesn't wear amazingly well, which is one of the reasons why I prefer the Tom Ford. It's a little glowier, wears a little better, but I forgive it because it's so stunning. The NARS Light Reflecting, similar to the Chanel, more coverage though. If I want a bit more coverage, I want to be a bit more full glam, this is the one I will go for. It's just so beautiful. The perfect amount of glow and luminosity, really nice amount of coverage, don't need a lot. I have great foundation shades in NARS's range. Again, in all of these, I have you know great shade ranges or I wouldn't love them as much as I do because you know shade really makes a difference to how you feel about foundation. Those are the three I find myself using the most frequently. The Hourglass, as much as I love it, I just wish it had a bit more glow. The House Labs, oh, it's probably in fourth place. I'm not going to beat about the bush when it comes to concealer because I feel like this is probably the most obvious result of this entire video. The three I went for was the Pat McGrath, the Huda Beauty and the Dior Forever. Ask me to choose between these. People ask me all the time, which one is your favorite? It's very hard. I'm just gonna tell you an answer and I feel like I'm gonna be guessing because I love them all equally. These are all of my children and they all are very similar. The Pat McGrath and the Huda Beauty are almost identical. They have obviously different bullets and different doe foot. So that's slightly different. The Pat McGrath is more precise. The Huda Beauty is larger, but they both are like a full coverage soft matte finish. They don't crease. They don't age my under eye area. I find the Huda is maybe hair smoother, possibly, but it's maybe slightly harder to use because it has a very large doe foot. They are neck and neck. The Dior is quite a different beast to the other two because it has a luminous hydrating finish, which I love. Again, doesn't crease, doesn't move. It wears beautifully on me. I find it very flattering and it feels nicer and lighter under the eyes. Those are my top three. There was no competition. There's no fourth place here. It's those three, ride or die. Next, I'm gonna do skin tints. Now, these are a product I didn't really use a lot until like the last year, I would say, and then I got really into them. First up, the Shantikai, what? First up, the Shantikai Anti-Aging Skin Tint. I love this one in the summer because it gives me a touch of like a bronzy glow to my face. When my face gets a lot lighter than my body in summer, this is the perfect evening up and matching up of my face and body. It gives me gorgeous, healthy looking skin, but it just really helps everything match. If I'm going like no makeup or basically no makeup, I can wear that and nothing else and just look a little more awake, look a little less washed out on my face compared to my body. It's like a go-to for like no makeup makeup days. The Chanel Le Beige. This is the water fresh tint. This is like the Chantecaille, but in winter. I can't use this in winter because it's gonna be a lot deeper than my body on my face. So I can't really use this. And that's when I reach for this one. It gives me an more evened out complexion, gorgeous glowy skin without coverage. So it just matches whatever my face is doing. It does have shades, but I don't know that they're really gonna make much difference because there's really no coverage here, barely at all, like a whisper of coverage, like someone just sort of blew a little bit of a breeze towards your face of coverage, that's what I'm gonna say. Slightly more even skin, much more alive, healthy, glowy, 
healthy looking youthful skin but really no coverage it's not going to cover melasma or redness it's just going to slightly take the edges off but be super beautiful and finally when i want more of a skin tint the shiseido synchro skin self-refreshing this is going to give you more coverage more of a sort of tinted moisturizer a bit more of a like light medium coverage very light fresh hydrating on the skin it just gives you the most gorgeous glow really healthy juicy skin a bit more coverage than these other two so if i just want to do a little bit more in the summer this is the one i go for it has spf 20 as well so it's you know ideal for days when you want to do a little bit and you want an extra little bit of spf it's perfect and now for powders, we're gonna quickly rush through this because I barely use a powder. If I am going to set my face all over, maybe my foundation is super, super glowy or it's gonna be a very crazy long day that I want to look flawless for, I choose the Sisley. It's the only powder I really like to use to set my face because it doesn't look like powder. You can't detect powdery look to the skin. It slightly takes the edge slightly off of glow but not really it's just a hint a bit like the tom ford primer it's just going to slightly refine everything but it's going to wear a little better than if you didn't set it so i'm a big fan of that powder powder without being powder the only powder i will ever put under my eyes probably ever again you know it's the pat mcgrath i have all three shades i love them all depending on the time of year in winter i typically use the light Sometimes I use the yellow powder. It's the most smooth, flattering powder you could possibly ever put on your under eye bags without making the situation far worse than it needs to be. And finally, really the only other powder that I use with any regularity is the Charlotte Tilbury. I only use this for touch-ups. If I've been on the go for like nine hours and then I've got to take my kids to swimming or gymnastics and I've got a bit shiny around here, a bit shiny in my forehead, maybe I'm going out for drinks or I'm meeting someone for dinner, I haven't got time to do anything other than little touch-ups, I will just take this powder and it mattifies everything beautifully. It brings everything back to looking acceptable level of disheveled after a long day. And that is what I use it for. It's just really a touch up powder, but it does the job perfectly. Moving on to setting sprays. There are really only three that I use. It's these three. The MAC Fix Plus is more of like a multitasker for me. I use this to you know dampen a brush i use this to dampen my sponge i might use it just as a bit of a finishing touch to my makeup i enjoy it it does the job and it's affordable enough that i don't feel like i'm wasting it if i'm using it frivolously okay the lisa eldridge is the newest one to my collection this is not a setting spray that adds longevity this is a finishing spray and let me tell you it's amazing I thought, what's the point of it? That's what I thought. If it's not going to extend the life of my makeup, what are we bothering with it for? That's what I thought. But the other week, I had made such a hash of my makeup. I'd used some products that I ended up not really loving. Everything just looked a bit heavy and a bit powdery. So I soaked myself with this. And I swear to the heavens that this literally fixed everything. Everything just melted into the skin. It took the heaviness away. It really just perfected everything. It's got the most light, refreshing mist I've ever used. It's a delight and a joy. Is it hugely necessary? Not really. Do I enjoy using it? I do. I can't lie to you. The Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Setting Spray, however, does improve the longevity of your makeup and also refreshes it and it just keeps it looking fresh for longer. This really made me a believer in setting sprays. This is my, I think I've used two minis and this is my first full size of this. I never thought I'd be someone who's repurchasing setting spray, but that really does what it says on the tin. It can take all that powderiness away and everything will melt into the skin really beautifully and naturally. It takes the powdery edge off, but it also extends the wear of my makeup, blush, especially stays like there and visible for much longer when I use that. I always use that whenever I'm going for like a long day when I want my makeup to look decent. I never thought I'd be that person, but I am now. Bronzes. So this was one of the toughest categories for me. I kept changing my mind. I kept going back and forth, but I ended with the Gucci 
in shade two, just a little less warm than a lot of my bronzers, but still with that glorious natural glowy finish. Absolutely love it. A new, a very new entry is the Dior bronzer, and this is in the shade four tan bronze again this was a new to me shade of this bronzer i've always liked it as far as matte bronzers go but i was purchasing the warm tone shades and i discovered this one and i just love that it's a bit more neutral it's the most natural the softest bronzer that i have in my collection but i just love that when i really want a very natural understated bronze look i go for that dior shade and now for one that's going to make everybody cry because it is a discontinued one. The state of this, I tell you, it's the, so I'm going to close that before it goes everywhere in the shade Tantastic. You can see from the state of it, how much I've loved this, how much I've used this. This is probably, if I had to pick one, it might be my favorite ever bronzer. I'm furious that it's discontinued. I can't tell you how sad that makes me because especially as mine is nearly almost gone it's just the most perfect shade the silkiest smoothest finish it's so buildable it's so natural it's a travesty that we can't get this anymore but what i will say is that the tom ford terror bronzer is pretty close so if you are like crying out hankering for this please i hope i beg i pray that they bring it back but that is the closest one i found it's not a million miles away from the dior it's it builds more and will give you more payoff eventually and it just has a prettier finish i think but those three are my jam. The Victoria Beckham, the Charlotte Tilbury, they were all on my list and then taken off. I went back and forth. It was the hardest category for me. There are so many great bronzers, but those are the three that I feel are the easiest to use shade-wise and that suit me the most undertone-wise. Contour products. All three of these contour products are creams. How proud are you of me? I mean, who would have thought that a couple of years ago? But I will say that contour is probably the category where I'm the most comfortable and confident with creams. I find them like easy to use when it comes to contour and they just, they tickle my pickle and I don't know what to tell you, but I, I love a cream contour apparently. I'm that girl. But my top three are the Charlotte Tilbury Contour One, the Westman Atelier, and the newest entry, the Victoria Beckham Contour Stylist. I literally just used this for the first time today and fell instantly in love with it. I was so happy with how it turned out and how it allowed me to contour my nose for the first time and be happy with how it looked. So we have the Victoria Beckham, the Charlotte Tilbury and the Westman Atelier. They're all three of these. What's special about them, which stands out to me, is that they aren't as warm as a bronzer, but they're not like ashy grey, like crematorium grey on me they're a little more natural a little less intimidating i find all three of these very easy to use very easy to blend and they're very natural which makes it less intimidating for me to use them thinking i'm not going to end up with like you know just a line on my face they blend themselves i don't really have a favorite obviously i spoke about in my review the victoria beckham you get a small ridiculously small amount of product for quite the hefty price tag so for that reason i would probably more so recommend one of these two i think the westman atelier might be my favorite but i really like the size and shape of this stick so you know it really is up to you whether you want to fork out that much on you know a teeny little crayon but the result is amazing. So for me, it was worth it. Okay, so highlighters. This was another one that was really hard. And I hate to say this, but I think all three of my favorite highlighters are limited edition. What is happening? Why have I cursed the world of highlighters? First up, it's Pat McGrath Divine Rose. I think if I had to choose a number one, it may well be this and she is limited edition or she was limited edition but she has returned recently it's gone out of stock again but i think it probably will be back i really wish and pray that pat mcgrath would bring this out in more shades because the formula of this 
is stunning. It's so thin and shiny with like zero glitter or shimmer. It's just wetness. It's miraculous of a formula and I'm obsessed with it. Then we have this bad boy, so special, Chanel's Rev de Camellia, another limited edition. The special thing about this one is that lack of base. It just works so beautifully and seamlessly melts into the skin because there's really like very little color to it. It's just glow and sheen and it's so pretty and flattering. And then in third spot is the Terracotta Luminizer in the Warm Gold from Galon. I'm not sure if this is limited edition. Someone tell me if it is or not, because I'm not sure about this one. What I will say is if this one is limited edition, my fourth place highlighter that I know is permanent is the Pat McGrath permanent line of highlighters. Those are stunning. I think Divine Rose is the best she's ever made and should be the permanent one, but if you can't get hold of any of these three, that would be my next choice, would be the permanent Pat McGrath. They're all just giving me glow, luminosity, lit from within, but enough. You know, I don't wanna look like metallic, I'm wearing highlighter. I just want to look glowy and healthy, but like I'm just doing it because I drink a lot of water. That's what those three give me. Blush was one of, if not the hardest category. It was ridiculous. Ridiculous trying to choose three blushes when blush is like one of my favorite categories of makeup and I have like 500 of them. It was impossible, I tell you. But I've done it kind of, but definitely take it with a pinch of salt. I changed my mind 46 times, okay? That's how confused I was. I'd say that this top three is probably more so like a top three formulas than it is like specific shades. These all look so similar, it's hilarious. But we have Hourglass at Night, Chanel Alizane and Nars Tempted. Yes, I'm very predictable. Clearly I have a type when it comes to blush and it's these glorious little peachy shades. The Hourglass has that stunning, beautiful, glow to it that's like it's coming from within. The Alizane, it's got this, yes, it's peachy, but it has this sort of gold shift that is just so pretty. And then Nars Tempted, it, yes, it's a peachy blush, but it has this slightly neutral quality to it that just gives you that bombshell makeup cheeks. It's a little lighter. The other two are quite a bit, or can be, a lot deeper if you build them than NARS Tempted. So they kind of help me out a bit more in the summer when I've got a bit of color to my skin as they can be built quite a bit. Whereas the NARS Tempted is very soft and subtle and a kiss of just gorgeous, glowy, you know, Victoria's Secret cheek. <laughs> like I said, I could have included like 15 others in this top three. I changed my mind a hundred times when it came to blush, but those are my current three favorites, if you, you know, bend my arm. And for cheek palettes, cheek palettes, I love them. They're one of my favorite categories of makeup. Tiger from Hourglass, and then two palettes from Charlotte Tilbury. We've got Nudegasm and Lovegasm. What these three palettes have in common is they are complete for my skin tone. We've got bronzer, a choice of highlight, a choice of blush, that's all I ask for. I don't want anything to be missing. I don't need finishing powder. I want bronzer, blushes, highlighters, and this is perfect. I love this packaging. I love everything in here. It all works stunningly on my skin tone, and that is what stands out for me from these three palettes. You know, the NARS blush palettes I love. I nearly included one of those, but they never have bronzers in. They've just got blush and highlight, which is great, but I always feel like there's a couple shades in there I won't use. The Lovegasm and the Nudegasm palettes from Charlotte Tilbury, just making sure I had those names around the right way. I mean, this one is definitely deeper and richer, more summer friendly for me. This one is probably better for a lighter skin tone. It's just a little lighter. This one is much richer, as you can see beautiful, easy to use, stunning formulas, very Charlotte Tilbury glowing, gorgeous, bronzy skin. I absolutely love, live for a face palette. Those three stand out because they have 
everything in there and nothing that I don't use or don't need. Oh my goodness, lip products. My SIM card has 11 minutes of space left. We've got to wrap this up, you know? So I've broken my lip products down into multiple categories just so I can cheat, really but it was ridiculous to choose like three favorite lipsticks. It was never going to happen. So I've done my top three shiny lipsticks, matte lipsticks, liquid lipsticks, and lip glosses. So here we go. My top three shiny lip formulas. Boom. We've got Lisa Eldridge's Luxuriously Lucent. Just the most perfect, easygoing formula for like summer when you want to add as much or as little color as you want. So comfortable, a satin natural amount of shine and also color. This is the shade Je Ne Sais Quoi, one of my favorites. Probably my favorite lipstick formula ever to exist is the Dior Addicts. These are definitely sheerer than the Lisa Eldridge's more built up. They're also much shinier, which is what really tips me over the edge to call these my favorites. This is Mimi Rose and Je Ne Sais Quoi, much shinier, sheerer, lighter. I live for that formula. And third for the shiny lipsticks is Charlotte Tilbury's Superstar Lips formula, a very underrated one, but I feel like it's underrated because she discontinued all of the best shades. This is Happy Lips one of my favorite lipsticks of all time. I love the skinny bullets. These just feel so nice, like a lip mask on your lips with the perfect amount of pigment and the most beautiful amount of shine. These are it for me when you're talking about shiny lipsticks. Look no further. But Charlotte Tilbury, please bring back all of the shades of the superstar and give us more. We love it. I think it's her best formula. And then from one end of the spectrum to the other, matte lipsticks, but not liquids. These are bullet matte lipsticks. Again, we've got a Charlotte Tilbury underrated lipstick formula because they, discon they get discontinued. Some of the best shades are limited edition. There's not really a full shade range of these, but these are the everlasting, whatever they are called. I'll have the proper name down there for you. But this is Nude Look. These are some of the nicest matte lipsticks I've ever tried. They're so comfortable and smooth and almost like velvety and they wear so well. This is such a stunning shade, Velvet Nude as well, the perfect nude. If I want something that's gonna be comfortable, but it, I want it to like get through a dinner, these are so comfy and beautiful and flattering. They don't dry out my lips, but they are really long wearing. Of course, you know, Lisa Eldridge's matte formula was going to be in here. It's probably my favorite of all time. I'm wearing Velvet Rain today. The amount of pigmentation and color in these is ridiculous. They're not 100% transfer proof. They have enough give that they're comfortable and flattering. They don't shrivel my lips up, but they are just the most stunning range of colors I've ever seen in all my days. And third, we have the Dior Forever bullet lipsticks, and these are bulletproof. If you want a non-liquid, bulletproof, transfer-proof lipstick that is not so drying you want to cry at the end of the night, this is your guy. They're so hardcore wearing, but not like lip life-sucking dementors. My top three. By the way, that's the shade 518. Velvet Rain, Velvet Nude. And now we do have my liquid lipsticks. Not a big fan of lip liquid lipsticks. And one of these entries is 100% sure a cheat. And it's the Chanel Double Tenue. The reason I say it's a cheat is because it is a liquid lipstick. They are phenomenally long wearing and transfer proof, but they're like a shiny and they're just not like anything else. They're miraculous, okay? This is my number one liquid lipstick, although you could say it's cheating because it's not like a dry down matte lip liquid lipstick, but I'd rather that on my lips than anything else any day of the week. The two more traditional liquid lipsticks that are matte dry down there, you know, for a three course meal, are these two. The Tom Ford, the new liquid mattes from Tom Ford are amazing. They are so comfortable and so long wearing. They have just the teensiest amount of give. So once this is dried down, 
if you were to kiss your hand, you'd have like a similar amount of transfer to the least out. There'd be a slight, very, very faint print of your lips on your hand. But that just gives you that, that whisper of comfort. They don't start sucking up or shriveling your lips up. They are just slightly loose about the hoose. I don't know why that keeps coming up today, but I'm losing my mind clearly. This video has been, you know, long. And then we have the MAC Powder Kiss liquid lipsticks. These shook me to my core. These are like a mousse. And again, they're not completely transfer proof. They definitely transfer more than the Tom Ford, but they have that bit of give and that bit of comfort. So they're, they are really long wearing, but they're not completely bulletproof. So again, you have that little bit of comfort, that little bit of flex that just stops the life being sucked out of your soul. These shades are Lark and the best gift is me, which I think was a limited edition for holiday, but the formula of those is such a nice one at such a great price point. And next we have glosses. This was quite an easy one for me. I've got into more of a gloss gal recently, but I will say I don't really love traditional glosses. I want a bit more from my gloss. So my top three are the Hourglow Volumizing Glossy Balms, whatever these are called, something to do with Phantom. I believe, something to do with that. I love these. They're so flattering and juicy and glowy and glossy, but they have just the right amount of pigmentation. This is the shade Slip, which is one of my absolute favorites. They have great shades in this formula and it does give you a nice juicy, plump looking lip that's very smooth without being sticky. Of course, I had to include my Lisa Aldridge glosses. These are the perfect amount of pigment that you can get from a gloss. This is like a, a hybrid between a gloss and a lip mask. It feels so nice and comfy. Affair is my favorite shade ever. You don't need a lipstick with them. They have enough pigmentation and they're just beautiful, glossy, shiny lips. And then thirdly, the Fenty Gloss Bomb Cream, quite similar to the Lisa Eldridge, I would say, you know, lots of pigmentation there, lots of color payoff, really shiny, but in a very smooth way. This is the shade Honey Waffles, which is my absolute favorite. So we have Honey Waffles here, then we have the Hourglass Slip and Lisa Eldridge Affair. Like, Honey Waffles has so much rich warmth to it. It doesn't feel as nice. It feels a little heavier on the lips than the Lisa Eldridge does, but it has great payoff, beautiful shades, smells delightful. Those are my three favorite glosses. And the final category, I've nearly lost my voice. My camera's run out of space, but we're on the final category, guys. It's lip liners. Lisa Eldridge, Natasha Denona, and Charlotte Tilbury make the best lip liners in the game. I like everything about these. The Lisa Eldridge, I think, are the creamiest, but so long wearing, they're amazing. Natasha Denona, creamy and soft, don't quite wear as well as the Lisa Eldridge, but still a great lip liner. And the Charlotte Tilbury are not quite as creamy and as sort of soft as the other two. They're a little firmer, the Charlotte Tilbury, but they have a more matte finish and are incredibly long wearing and have some great shades. So those are my top three liners. Oh my gosh, I feel like I need to lie down, do you? Oh my goodness, I'm exhausted, I've lost my voice, I'm dehydrated. I need to go and resuscitate myself and have a lie down in a dark room. But we did it, we did it. Those are my top three. Please tell me if this was surprising, if this was exactly what you thought. Give me your top three in the comment section down below. I hope you found this useful and I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye, 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 bye.